Thank you very much, Anna. It's so fantastic to have you here, uh, and especially at Sparta Global to celebrate International Women's Day, which was on the 8th of March. Um, Anna has just done a fantastic talk for us here, and I think that's gone really well, very interactive, and I think everybody got really involved in that. Um, in terms of International Women's Day, what does that mean to you, and what does it mean in terms of Code First, Code First Girls, and why do we think it's important to celebrate women in tech? Well, the, uh, I believe the hashtag this year for International Women's Day is Each for Equal. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been asked several times as to what my take on that actually is. Why is it important mm -hmm. to use hashtag Each for Equal? And I sat down and I reflected on it. And the reason why I think it's important is because it represents collective action. It yeah. says it's not just women that are important. Yeah. It's also men as well. Mm -hmm in recognising that we need to get more women in technology and in recognising that the only way change can happen is if we work together, yeah. recognise the issues and really you know, start to make tangible things. Yeah. I think women, women, need, you know, women need to champion themselves but I think we need men to champion us as well. You know, yes. to, to go ahead and go, this is important to us and, and I think there should be more women in tech and men need to believe in that as well. Um, I totally agree. Um, in terms of taking you back to your career journey, uh, we know you've come from a big organisation, Lynda.com, which was then bought by um, mm -hmm. bought by LinkedIn. Has become LinkedIn Learning. It's one of their biggest learning platforms. It's, it's become really big. Commercial director uh, mm -hmm. in that space. What what does that career journey look like? What did it look like? in Linda, what did it look a little bit before that and, and what does it look like to you now? Um, well, I actually started off in family businesses okay. where my mum was the CEO okay. um, and I'm quite proud of that fact because um, I used to come home um, you know, from uh, during summers mm -hmm. and effectively I used to work in the business and she had, I suppose, what you would regard as a very early educational technology business mm -hmm. um, but that meant for me not only did I have a very strong female role model in my life I also could see that women are, are quite capable of building products, are very capable of leadership. Mm. And on top of that, at the grand old age of 17, I understood what a P&L was. And I think that we need to be investing in our daughters like this in the same way that a lot of people invest in their sons. Yeah. Women are quite capable of business and they're quite capable of technology. Yeah. We just need to expose them to the right opportunities. Yeah. Um, so that's how I kind of I guess, got a bit of a head start mm -hmm. in business. Uh, from there, I went to a global educational consultancy. I did that because I was like, 23 and I wanted to travel the world, yeah. and I thought that was the best way to do it. Um, and after three years there, um, I became known for helping businesses shift from being a uh, B2C model towards a B2B model in the educational technology space. Yeah. And that's when I got picked up by the MD of Linda.com. Um, and at the time, there wasn't even a position open. Yeah. We literally went for about 10 coffees. And at the end of the 10th coffee, he was like, Anna, I want to create a job for you. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be commercial director of Linda.com. Um, and I was kind of like, And still very great. young then. Yeah, I was still very young. Um, so when I went into Linda, I was for the European management team. I was um, not only the only woman on it, but uh, I was the youngest. Um, however, you know, Linda.com was named Linda.com after the founder of the company, mm -hmm. who is a woman and who created the first ed tech unicorn in the entire world. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just shows you that I think women are incredibly successful in the ed tech space. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of them were educators or teachers, as my mum was yeah. originally, and they have a real flair for educational technology. And what we're seeing right now out of Silicon Valley is not only did you have um, Linda herself, yeah. but now with the likes of Coursera, for example, mm -hmm. you're seeing these very big companies being founded and led by women and being incredibly successful in the process. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there, there is, you, you, you spoke about it earlier, about role models. Mm -hmm. I always say this is an Ada Lovelace syndrome, you know, where mm -hmm. you're asked to name somebody in technology and the only person you can name is Ada Lovelace. And yeah. you think, you know, we, we have so many others. We have, you know, we have Catherine Hamilton or mm -hmm. we have some others. 
And then we have our own role models. You know, you have your mother, and, and mm -hmm. it's a very diff you know different story for me. My mother was an actress in, in India growing up, where you weren't allowed to be that, and yet she was in her own way a pioneer of going, "I'm going to do this because I want to do it." Mm -hmm. And it isn't about tech, but it is about what what should we women do to make it? And and if we want to do something, if we have the power behind us and we have the right role models, we can do it. You know, we can do whatever we want, really. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that phrase, uh, well-behaved women seldom make history. Oh, I like that. And I think that the thinking behind that is that as women, you know, to be known in our space for a certain thing, to break these barriers down, what we have to do is be more bold yeah. and push the boundaries. Um, and we will get there in the end. Yeah. I'm quite sure of it. And, and I'm sure that, you know, you will be a role model for so many others and it can be fantastic because, you know, CEO of Good First Girls, you know, it's it's a it's a fantastic it's a fantastic achievement for for me. I think you know you should be very proud. I'm, I'm very proud. <laughs> Thank that, you very much. That you are um, you are doing what you're doing. Um, under your tenure, I've been looking at it hardly ten months in Good First Girls, mm -hmm. but huge changes, mm -hmm. big decisions, big moves. Um, you know, what do you think that has it gone really quickly? Has it gone too fast? What do you think you've done in ten months? You've probably just full of a hundred more ideas and a hundred more things you want to do. Uh, what, what's, what's next at Court First Girls? What's next? So uh, we have literally just rebranded. Yeah. We are about to relaunch our site. Mm -hmm. um, and we are moving uh, from the kind of education of women, which we will continue to do. We yeah. will continue to pledge mm -hmm. to reinvest a huge amount of our money back into the education of women. But what we want to do is offer more structured opportunities for women to be able to get jobs and okay. different career opportunities, whether that be as uh, entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or whether that be as uh, women going into organisations. Mm -hmm. So really the focus for me is how do we create economic opportunity for young women, I mean every single day, mm -hmm. that want to be in technology but don't know how to take the next step. Yeah. So basically you've, you're, you've created the supply you know where the supply is coming from. You've now got that sort of nailed. You know, we know we know we're getting women. Yeah. Now it's about where can we find the demand so that we can start making, you know, making their journeys much more uh, sensible. You know, you've learned code. Mm -hmm. Here's here's where you can you can work it. I think taking the first step is frequently the most difficult part of the journey. Mm -hmm. Once the first step is taken and those learning barriers are broken down and we realise, hang on a minute. Yeah. You know. Um, I can learn how to create an application, I can learn how to create a website. Yeah. These things are fundamental and ubiquitous to every single day of our lives. Yeah. If we can teach women those skills and we can break down the learning barriers, yeah. then we can take the next step after this, which is, do you know what? A career in technology is fantastic. Yeah. It's incredibly well paid. Yeah. And some of the opportunities to either create businesses or to go into organisations are quite frankly the future Yes, of the UK. Absolutely. No, I totally agree. Um, you know, Sparta Global and, and Code First World, you know, Code First Girls, we're working together collaboratively. Mm -hmm. we, we have sessions over here where we train Code First Girls uh, and we train about 70 girls at the moment in a training program. What else can we do? What do you think that, you know, would be, you know, you'd leave me with and go, no, there's more you can do? I mean, you know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I think that your employees are giving their time to give back to our community. We, we fully support that. Um, we think as well, you know, we've talked a lot about role models today. Uh, and I just wonder whether there's a space there to kind of expand from the hard skills towards um, some more of the soft skills as well to help women, um, you know, shake off these kind of shackles mm -hmm. of fear and help them enter the industry. And, yeah. um, for a final question, I was just wondering that, you know, if you had to give advice to girls, you know, you've reached that point where you can now give advice to people. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had to give advice and you had to say, okay, yeah. you know, for me, for me, it's all about girls and women building a personal brand. You know, what is your narrative? How do you curate your language mm -hmm. so that you're building that personal brand? So not only are you studying tech, but how will you then get yourself into that tech industry, what where, you know? What do you think that you know? What is it that personal brand? How do how do girls build that personal brand? How have you built your personal brand? Yeah. So I would say two things. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest piece of advice I can give is be human and be authentic. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of women, unfortunately, 
struggle sometimes to be themselves. Yeah. For example, if you look at leadership, mm -hmm. there's many male traits that are connected with leadership as a concept. Yeah. When we look at emerging female leaders, mm -hmm. what we try to make them see is that by being authentic mm -hmm. and kind of owning that sense of leadership, yeah. and it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, mm -hmm. you're a leader, mm -hmm. and it's okay to embrace that, they actually tend to lead far more effectively when they embrace who they are in that process. So be authentic and be human mm -hmm. in everything that you do, mm -hmm. whether it's connections with your clients, whether it's talks that you do, whether it's meeting various stakeholders, meeting people in the community. Yeah. People will inherently get more from you and you will create more meaningful connections mm -hmm. if you have the ability to do that. Yeah. The second thing that I would say is be bold. Mm -hmm. You know, I made a deal with myself, I think at the age of 11, mm -hmm. to do something that scared me at least once a day. Okay. What I mean by that is push yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do something that you wouldn't naturally do, mm -hmm. and you'll be amazed what happens as a result. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Anna, for being with us. Uh, I think what we, we, we're going to take away so many lessons from our conversation, but I think we're going to finish off with be authentic, be human, be bold. Thank you, Anna. Thank You're you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you.